Hello and welcome Shining Light Youth. So glad to see you. Uh, anybody who might be watching this video right now, but especially those who are a part of our church youth group, uh, maybe several students that attend here at Shining Light Baptist Academy. We're glad to have you. I'm glad that we're able to do this setup. It is a little bit different, but I hope that this time of uh, quick encouragement, and especially as we look at God's Word here just for a couple mo moments, it'll be an encouragement to you, it'll be a help to you, and most importantly, it'll be a challenge to you as we are facing uh, truly uh, difficult times. And uh, the, God's Word has lots to say about times like this, and how we are to stand, and how we are to go about it, how we are to face it. And I just want to give you a couple, uh, a couple thoughts on uh, what we should be doing during this time as we are facing this uh, coronavirus here in the United States, here in our, our area as well, here in Monroe, North Carolina. And so I just want to share with you five ways to effectively use your time during this uh, COVID-19, uh, quarantine, whatever it is you want to call it, during this time that we are facing, five ways that we can use our time effectively. You know, like I, many of us are at home, we're, we're, we're working at home, we're doing school at home, we're even doing church at home. We're all at home. The world is, is closed down, life has seemed to come to a stop, but we still have time. What can we use with our time and how can we better go about using our time each and every day that we're still here? The first thought I want to share with you guys is just continue to study and continue to work. Give your best, do your best. You have studies at home that uh, do your best on. Study, study more. You can never study too much. Uh, possibly a good time if you're struggling with grades. Hey, bump your grades up, get them up. Study, read, uh, study your Bible and read your Bible. Get to, to know the Bible more and the ways that God can speak to you and through you in his word. Um, do your schoolwork, like I mentioned. Work if you have a job and you're able to get out a little bit and do a little bit of work. Do a little bit of work around the house or outside the house. Be doing something and let it, uh, let it challenge you and motivate you to do something with this time and to do it the best of your abilities. Uh, that's what God's Word says, that everything that we have to do, let's do it to the best of our abilities. Let's give Him our best. Even in challenging times like this, stay busy, stay working, stay studying, and do your best. Be a blessing to others during this time. It is hard to get out. It is hard to uh, go and be with other people and, and to meet others. But be a blessing to others however you can be, whenever it might be. Uh, if that's something as easy as going to your next door neighbor and taking their their, their garbage can down and pulling it down to the street for them, or uh, whatever, I mean, really, endless possibilities, whatever it might be, be a blessing. Maybe, just maybe, uh, use social media rather than focusing on self, uh, use it to focus on others and, and send some encouraging messages to others. Um, you know, whatever, text, text somebody an encouraging message during this time. And let them know that you love them, that you're praying for them, that you want to be a help, and that you're available to be a help, that you're available to be an encouragement and be a blessing to them. I believe that's what we should be doing during this time. Be a blessing however you can be a blessing, whenever it might be. Thirdly, pray. Pray. Uh, one of the greatest uh, gifts that we are given, a, a tool in, in our spiritual life, is the gift of prayer. We're able to go to the Heavenly Father, the one who's watching over all. He sees all this that's going on, and he's known about it, and he knows the future and what's ahead. And we're able to pray to him. We're able to talk to him, the one who's in control. Why not take any fear or anxiety that we might have going on right now? Any, uh, anything that we're struggling with, any burdens that we're carrying, any sickness or, or health problems that we might be facing or others that we know might be facing and going through during this time. Why not take those to the Lord in prayer? Why not talk with Him, the one who's in control and the one who can fix our problems? Let's spend some time in prayer during this time. Let's pray for our nation. We, we as a nation who have been uh, wandering farther and farther from God, 
Yet we're praying, many are praying for this sense and the spirit of revival to be sent to our nation. Even we as teenagers, you guys as youth, can still be praying and making a difference in our nation right now by asking God to use you and use others to send revival to our nation. For us to turn our sights back onto God, turn our eyes back to Him, looking to Him. There's so much we could pray for during this time. There's so much we need to pray for during this time. Others, ourselves, uh, leadership that is needing to have the wisdom needed to help us through this time and know how to face it and how to go about it. We can turn to the one who can help us. Are we? Are you, young person, doing that? We can't. It's very easy. Whatever it is, take it to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Spend some time in prayer with God. But don't just spend a little bit of time. Use this time to work on your prayer life. You got nothing else going on. Use it. Spend some time with your prayer. Spend some time alone with God. And let it challenge you and let it help you work on your prayer life during this time. Work on you during this time. And your schoolwork and your studies. And that you would work hard and do your best. Be a blessing to others. Fourthly, enjoy the life that you've been given. It's as simple as that. Enjoy the life that you've been given. Life hasn't ended. It might seem that it's ended. You can't go to school. You can't see your friends. You can't spend time with them. Uh, we can't go out for uh, parties or, or certain events or activities. Uh, sports industry has shut down. We can't just sit at home and watch ESPN. Uh, we can't do things like that. Life is not fun anymore. It might seem to you, young person, that life has ended, but it hasn't. It's just changed. It's just changed. We live in such a fast-paced uh, and all too often selfish uh, society and world. And now that things have slowed down, things have come to a close, they've come to a halt, we are all, all at home, right? Take this time to appreciate the little things in life. Take this time to be thankful for what God has given you. Take this time and just look around you at all the great things that God has blessed you with and spend time with those things as well. Appreciate those things. I'm primarily thinking of people that God has placed in our lives or maybe God has placed us in their lives, our family. You grow up with them. You live each and every day of your life with them. You should know them better than anybody else. They should know you better than anybody else. We should love one another. We should be close. Use this time to connect with your family, with your brothers, with your sisters, with your parents, in a way that you might not have ever done so before. We should be closer now more than ever. Use this time. Grow to know one another. Grow to love each other more. Spend time with each other and enjoy these because these moments won't last forever. Uh, one of these days you'll be up, you'll be out of the house, you'll be on with your own family, your own life, doing your own things. So slow down. Take some time and appreciate it now. Enjoy it now. Love it now. And do something about it now. Be thankful that you still have a, a church family as well that loves you and cares about you, is praying for you, and, and appreciate it. Slow down and think about them as well. And use that prayer life that you're able to have to pray for them. And be a blessing to them by reaching out to them saying, Hey, so-and-so, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying about you. And I want to be a help to you any way I can. Be thankful that you still have school. You have a school that wants to invest in you. And wants to help you and push you forward in life. And is continuing to do so through our education. Yes, it's different, but continue to use it and be thankful for it. Enjoy it that you're still able to have it and take advantage of it. Slow down. Be thankful. Be appreciative. Enjoy life. It's changed. It's different, but we can still enjoy it. We can still have fun, and we can still be thankful for all the things that God has given to us and is giving to us each and every day. Make much of God. Make much of God. We live in a world where it's all about self. Uh, as previously mentioned, what can I do for myself? 
how can I better myself or make myself seem bigger and, and better and smarter than others? Uh, how can I show off my talents and my abilities? How can I bring attention and prestige and maybe even glory my way and, and have the light shining down on me where it's all about me? It's all about me. We do this through social media, YouTube. Now more than ever, everybody's at home making these YouTube videos, posting, sharing, uh, growing their YouTube channels and things like that for self and whatever it is that they're doing. We do this through texting, you know, we have to make ourselves seem better in our conversations, you know, how can I be better than so-and-so, and this is how I'm better than so-and-so, possibly. We do it by posting endless selfies. Uh, on social media. We pick the best filters, we edit it however possible, maybe even Photoshop we go in there to make ourselves look the best that we can look and we share it with this smart little caption on how our life is just great, it's grand and we're hoping that everybody will see it, that we'll get all these likes and shares and, and comments. Whatever the case is, that's the type of world we're living in. We're living in that day and age. We draw attention to self. We draw it to ourselves and do our best to make ourselves look better than we truly are. You know, John the Baptist is a character that I think about when it comes to a topic like this. He had everything going for him before Jesus. He really did. He had the followers, the following, right? The people would come to him and would flock to him. They wanted to hear his preaching and his teaching. They wanted to see what he was up to and what he was doing. He had the disciples as well. Yeah, he had some disciples before Jesus had disciples. He had some great, great things going for him. He was a different man. It brought attention to himself in that way. People wanted to go and follow and wanted to go and hear John the Baptist, they knew of him. Yet when Jesus was coming onto the scene, starting his earthly ministry, John the Baptist willingly and humbly stepped aside. And what's it recorded? One of my favorite verses, my life verse actually, in John 3.30, he says, He must increase, but I must decrease. It's not about me anymore. He's come. He's on the scene. He's ready to take over. He's ready to do great things. It's not about me. It's all about him. And he stepped aside. He put himself aside willingly and humbly to make much of Christ and not himself. Another individual who didn't care about getting the credit or receiving the praise was no other than a young little shepherd boy. He didn't come from much. He didn't have much. But my, oh my, how God changed that in his life. David, a character that almost every, uh, every person in the world is aware of and knows, especially the story of David and Goliath. Great story, a story that we can learn much from. There's a couple verses I want to look to uh, just real quickly here in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Starting in verse 42, he is facing the giant here, Goliath. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with stays? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. And I love David's response. Much like John the Baptist here. How do we make much of God? by making little of self. Verse 45 here, 1 Samuel 17. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
In all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth, not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you unto our hands. You see here, David makes very little about himself, but he makes much of God. Only twice does David say that he would do anything. And he refers to himself. God is mentioned over two times more in this passage of scripture while David is talking to Goliath. You see, make much of God. Increase his name and not yours. Not just in this time, but at any time in life. We can take this now and we can apply this now and we can allow it to change us now. And as we move forward, it could be a help to us and to others. We make much of God now. We'll make much of him later on. We hardly have anything worth giving as is anyways, right? Let alone to make much of in this life. So how can we put the, the light onto ourselves? How can we boast about ourselves? How can we puff ourselves up and push ourselves forward when we hardly have anything to give as is? We can't make much of a name for ourselves. Oh, but there is one who can. There's one who can use the little bit that we have to offer if we just give it to him. And once we give it to him, he can take it and he can use it in a way that's not going to boost our name or boost our reputation. It's not going to put our name up there for all the world to see. Our face won't be everywhere, but it will be his. We'll be able to make much of God when we make little of ourselves and all the little things that we might have to offer. And that God has already given to us. You see, it comes from him anyways. Why not just give it to him and say, here, you take it. You use it to make your name known more. Make much of God during this time. No matter the challenge. We face a challenge like this and this virus. No matter the obstacle that you may face. No matter the size of the enemy that might be standing in front of you. Make much of God. You make much of God, God's got it under control. He's got it handled. He can do things that we can't. Just make much of Him. Look to Him. Turn to Him. Take this time to slow down. Work on yourself. Improve yourself. Be more appreciative of those around you, those that God has placed in your life, and the little things that you have in life. And enjoy the life that you've been given while wow, you can enjoy it. Pray more. Spend more time with God. Use this time to look at yourself. Where am I in a relationship with God? Am I close? Could I be closer? Do I have a relationship at all? And now more than ever do we need a relationship with Him. Let's work on that. Let's turn to Him. Let's spend time with Him. Let's love Him more. Study and work hard. Give it all that you can in everything you do during this time. Be a help however and whenever you can. But make much of God and make much of Him. Not much of you. Little yourself. Look to Him. Thank you all for watching. I hope it was a blessing and an encouragement. But I hope it was a challenge to you as well. And that it will challenge you to do more and to be more for God in this day, in this time, during this, this trial that we're facing. We love you. We miss you here at Shining Light. We can't wait until we're able to get back together and meet together uh, in, in our normal setting on a regular basis. But we love you. We're praying for you. Let us know if we could do anything for you. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. Um, let us know if we could be a blessing anyway, anyhow. We hope to see you again sometime soon. Take care. God bless. See you later.